hey what's up guys and welcome to the channel again uh, so we will be wrapping up the time complexity of algorithms in this particular session okay uh, we left off with uh, we were left up with uh, finding time complexity of recursive algorithms in the last session we'll just see how to calculate time complexity of recursive algorithms and what exactly uh, is meant when we say recursion okay so we will be first looking into the aspects why recursion is important and why do we do recursion in programming okay so recursion is basically calling the function again um, within the body of the function okay so when there is a function that basically calls itself again inside the function it's called recursion okay we will be seeing some very uh, good examples and we will be visualizing re recursion that will make your job a lot easy when it comes down to understanding uh, recursion in 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 general okay so when i say uh, you need to calculate a factorial of a of a number okay so factorial is basically a multipli multiplied uh, quotient a multiplied number till n so say i have to find a factorial of 4 it will be basically 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so this is what the factorial of 4 is going to be and you can see the result is going to be printed as 24 so this is a very basic factorial program okay and what factorial does is basically if n is equal to is equal to 0 so there, there are three particular things in recursion you need to find the base case okay what is the base case here n is equal to is equal to 0 is the base case and basically the other loop is for all the other cases so it will terminate the recursive calls will terminate when there is the value of n that is equal to n is equal to is equal to 0 so you can see at line number 15 that's what it basically does uh, on n is equal to 0 value it returns 1 and else it keeps on multiplying and calls the function itself recursively okay you can see n into factorial n minus 1 and this basically keeps on calling until the value gets on to 0 and when this is 0 there is a return again and so on and so forth it will keep on doing that until you reach to a particular result okay so this is basically performed in a stack okay there is a stack uh, call ha that happens for each of the method calls that is happening over here and when you basically analyze it it will look something like this so say we have to calculate factorial of 5 okay so say i need to calculate factorial of 5 you can see how these calls go by okay uh, just um, uh, just uh, to give you a clear picture of how ex exactly this works so 5 is again uh, you can see at the last okay uh, in the last part of the screen factorial 5 is getting calculated right how it is getting calculated you can see in the visualization above so it is getting 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 and again it is it will return 1 okay um, so it's basically giving down it, it's basically giving you the result in forms of each factorial uh, function call and basically at the end when it returns the base value it gives down the value itself so see uh, it has now converted to 5 into factorial 4 then 4 into factorial 3 and then 3 into factorial 2 uh, and basically again it will be doing 2 into factorial 1 and finally 1 will return out of the value right so this is uh, this is how actually um, uh, no recursion happens inside okay the, the, uh, this this might have given you a broader picture how actually a factorial can be calculated over there right um, so okay so this is basically a, a, a very basic factorial example and again we will see one more example which is a Fibonacci series okay uh, so basically Fibonacci series is uh, whenever you start a number with one and one and um, zero and one and basically you keep on adding the previous two numbers it gives you the fibonacci series okay so to give you a, a, a like a pictorial representation of it it looks something like this okay so the value starts with zero then one then the next value is one uh, the term one is with red arrow and the term two is red arrow so each of the value each of the iterations there will be a recursive call and they will calculate the next particular term for that fibonacci series and it keeps on growing right um this is a basically an infinite series and it keeps on growing so uh, uh so this is again an example of a, a recursive solution okay so you can see uh, in the visualized image how it goes to the base case okay and then we get the value of the base case it comes down again up one level up it calculates the base value again and then basically sums up and gives you the result okay so it's very uh, it may be very counterintuitive first when you look into it but uh, but to be honest recursive 
recursion is all about finding the base case um, uh, finding sub problems and linking between them okay uh, we'll be having a separate series of sessions on recursion and different problems we can solve through recursion in in, in a while but this is basically how um, uh, what a recursive solution or what a recursive algorithm mean okay what 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 do i mean when i say a recursive solution okay so say uh, now we have to derive complexity of a recursive algorithm something like this okay uh, say i have to derive a fun uh, uh, complexity of such an algorithm which is written over the screen okay so how will i proceed okay what's what what is the different process uh, uh, what are the different steps what will take to do, uh, derive the uh, complexity of this particular algorithm so it's pretty simple okay first we find the time recurrence relation which which is basically uh, what you can see on the screen how the, how how will how does it come will so that uh, with with uh, with some pen and paper in 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 a while but just try to understand that this in this particular for loop from line number 8 to 13 you are doing a constant amount of work it is the loop is running n times so the constant amount of work we can depict as nc okay that is a constant amount of work and then basically you are making two recursive calls from line number 15 to line number 16 so they are basically termed as the recurrence relation uh, between both, to, both both of them so basically it comes down to 2t and my 2 plus nc okay and then finally what we do is we try to form a tree like structure and when we you find a tree like structure it gets again uh, divided into different steps and finally you find the height of the tree and that gives you uh, the recurrence relationship uh, uh, the, that gives you the complexity of the recursive algorithm which we are which you were trying to find okay let's see an example of a recursive algorithm okay how you will find um, the time complexity of a recursive algorithm so <clears throat> when we uh, when we do a recursive solution for any problem okay um just for example i have given an example on your screen uh, let's see you have a amount of computational work which is going to look like function of n which is going to be uh, which is going to return 1 when you have n is equal to is equal to 0 and when uh, uh, it's it's doing some k constant work in 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 mid of the loop from line number 8 to line number 13 and then at the end you can see two recursive calls right the two recursive calls call the fun again but with the output n by 2 right so this is the um, this is a recursive um, algorithm and we will try to find uh, we'll try to find a recursive solution a recursive time complexity of this particular algorithm okay so as i have uh, told you in earlier um, earlier part of the session that what you need to do is you need to find uh, a time relationship between uh, between the uh, the algorithm you are writing and the basically you have to write a function in terms of tn okay so when we try to write that in form of tn it some some somewhere it will look like uh, let me select a pen okay so this is the uh, recursive relation where it comes down to when uh, when you see the algorithm okay when you see the algorithm on the right hand side of your screen um, it, it it turns down to a relationship that looks like tn is equal to 2t and by 2 plus nc because it's doing some constant work and for the line number 15 and 16 we have written 2t and by 2 so how do we find exactly the algorithm uh now what what is the exact process of finding the time complexity of this is you need to draw a recursion tree okay and how do you draw a recursion tree it's very simple like you will take the constant amount of work that is getting done and then basically draw something like okay this is the first recursive relation that uh, that gets formed uh, with the above equation and then again you will substitute n by 2 to um, uh, to the above equation and you will get something like uh, the tree will grow like right so this is basically going to form a pattern right 
if you notice down uh, at every step there is a constant amount of work that is getting done that is nc nc and nc okay and this basically is a tree and whose uh, whose basically amount of work that is getting done on each level is nc so if you want to calculate the whole uh, time complexity of this particular algorithm you will need to find the length of the tree right this this length of the tree that is getting formed okay i will just delete the above part because i think um, that's that's basically a bit uh, taking up some space over there but this this is what um, uh, the time complexity will come down so at each of the steps uh, basically you will form uh, nc 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 amount of work and you, you are you are seeing that it is basically um halving down uh, each time uh, you go down the tree it's basically halving down so if you have guessed it and you have guessed it right that the length of the tree that is um, that is going to be here is basically log n okay so if i calculate the total time complexity of the complete algorithm which is there on the right hand side it's going to be nc into log n okay and if you simplify this basically it will come as n log n so this is uh, basically a, uh, an example where uh, where you can you know just figure out how you can calculate a uh, uh, recursive time recursive algorithms time complexity and you can basically follow this type of a structure with any problem and you will be easily able to find the time complexity of a recursive algorithm yeah last but not the least uh, we will close the session by looking into theta and omega notation and finally summarize what we have learned in in the complexity section so we'll first go through the theta notation okay so theta notation is uh, roughly you can understand uh, as the average case complexity okay so there is an uh, so there is what you you can call as the exact time complexity that can be measured with the theta location it's not very much important it's 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 like uh, you just need to know that when you need to find an average case complexity or you need to basically find out uh, the complexity of an algorithm in in average of uh, average of the upper and the lower you will just go for the theta location and the theta notation basically gives you the result in the same form what you are seeing in the big o of as well but it's like it's very specific that your algorithm is going to perform in that particular range only so when i say quick sort has an algorithm of log n uh, so basically i mean that the worst case can be log n but when i say theta it, it is going to be theta of n theta of log n so it's it's when i append theta to some algorithm notation it basically says the exact time complexity is going to be that much what i am going to specify as the algebraic equation okay so that's what uh, basically theta notation is for and similarly uh, omega notation is for the best case uh, which we generally don't deal with but you just need to remember that whenever we talk of the best case complexity these all are like these these all come under bogus uh, complexities but but we just need to be aware that when we talk of the best case complexities it's it's basically omega notation what we are talking about okay so let's look into the summary of all those what we have learned so far okay the first thing was big o which was the upper bound uh, upper bound or the washed case okay the second was was the was the omega which we just looked it is the lower bound or the best case and theta which is the averages case okay between the upper and the lower that you can call as which we just uh, saw uh, before this slide right so this is how the complexity of algorithm grows right we have seen that o of 1 is constant which is the best okay and then with it is uh, log n then n then n log n then n squared then n cube 2 to the power n and then factorial which is the worst okay so when you need to find out the solution for an algorithm uh, you will just try to find it in constant time which is the best and then if not you can go for log n then go for n then go for n log n n square n cube and finally um, the worst case will be of course you will not want to go into but if you tend to get into that last scenario it's it's like uh, o of n factorial so that's it um so so this was the whole complexity series uh, guys okay it covers approximately all the things that is required for finding and uh, finding complexity of algorithms uh, both recursive and non-recursive we have seen lots of examples you just need to revise and come up with 
your own notes okay you can prepare the notes of it and basically it will be all good like if you go through these things um uh, and you no know, c solves uh, uh, complexity related problems that has been asked in interview uh, you will be very easily be able to answer all of them okay so see you in the next session take care bye bye